Let's talk about linear regression and basic optimization using MXNet Luon. Okay, so let's start with linear methods. So this is a very simple linear function. Let's say I have two points, 0 and 4, and 6 and 0. And so, of course, the equation 2x plus 3y equals 12 fits this nicely, and I could solve for y in order to get a nice linear regression. Okay, well, that sounds quite abstract, but let's actually put this into perspective. Suppose we want to buy a house. So what you do is, well, of course, you go and pick a house, and you take a tour, and you read the facts, and you look at the disclosures, and then at some point it comes to figuring out how much money you should bid. The reason why this matters is because what you're going to pay for the house is what you bid, not necessarily what the next highest bidder bids. So in other words, if the house costs a million dollars and you bid maybe $1.2 million and the next highest bidder bids maybe just $1 million, then you've basically overbid it by $200,000. And this is not a good thing because it's basically $200,000 that you could have spent otherwise. So suppose we take a really gorgeous house that costs around five and a half million dollars, seven bedrooms, five bathrooms, looks really gorgeous. And well, it's been on Redfin for two weeks, which actually happens to be a long time in the Bay Area. But okay, Redfin estimates it's only really going to be worth maybe about $5.3 million. In that case, you could make a bid for maybe $5.3 million. And if you win it, well, then you've saved $200,000 on a very expensive house. Okay. So in other words, you have a model that predicts the price and you have a listing price picked by the agent. And the latter can be anything. Now, this is real money. So, you know, the model tries to, you know, pick the curve of the price over time. And then maybe A picks some price that's maybe spot on, maybe a little bit lower, maybe B pays more money. And if you know, B relies on, let's say, the Redfin model and you know, you over, Redfin overestimates the price by $100,000, then it's gonna be $100,000 out of pocket, which is not great. Let's make a very simple model. And of course, that's not true because, you know, the land is worth something and the location and the style and so on. But let's just assume that it depends somehow on the number of bedrooms, number of bathrooms, the living area. And let's call those variables X1, X2 and X3. And secondly, let's assume that the sales price is actually a weighted sum over those key factors. In other words, I have W1 times X1 plus W2 times X2 plus W3 times X3 plus some bias B. So our goal is going to be to determine those weights WI and the bias such that then for a new unseen house, we'll estimate the price accurately. Okay, so in math, given some n-dimensional input x of x1 through xn and some weight w1 through wn and bias, y is going to be w transposed x plus b. Or in other words, sum over wi xi plus the bias b. This is a linear model. Such models are some of the most popular models in machine learning and statistics, and a lot of really beautiful things can be said about them. But for us, they are just a point of departure as we go to deeper, more nonlinear models. But for now, let's stick with those. So a linear model can actually be viewed as a single layer neural network. So I have inputs x1, x2, x2, up to xd, and I have some output, which is just O1. And of course, if I want to get a deep network, I can go and stack them, but for now, let's just stick with this. Then I can go and you know do some computation. Now, if you think about it, this is actually the granddaddy of all neural networks, namely a single neuron. So in biology, you have those dendrites, they gather all the inputs, maybe with synaptic weights, so you get basically inputs times the weighting. And then this is all fused in the nucleus in the soma. And then you get an output, and the output goes somewhere else. So you have basically the exon 
and then it sends it to some other part in the brain and those neurons that those you know they can be very long right so for instance if you have you know cells that control muscles then maybe the cell might be in my head and then it'll travel through my head to the arms up to the finger such that I can move my finger so this is one very long wire in any case um, this is the origin uh, but for us we mostly care just about how well it does so one way of measuring accuracy is by just taking the difference between what we predict and what we actually then observe so in other words I take y minus y hat and I could take the absolute value of that or I could take the squared uh, value of that now why would I pick the square well because later and it turns out that if I take derivatives of that it's very very nicely analytically retractable the other reason is that having a quadratic model corresponds to making the assumption that what I'm observing isn't necessarily the value of the truth but the value of the truth corrupted with some Gaussian noise and that's exactly what the squared loss does okay. okay so now I have my model I have a loss I know how I get my outputs I know how to get my inputs I need data so I need training data and what I might do is for instance I might just pick all the houses that sold in the past six months and use that to aggregate and come up with an estimate of how much the houses will cost. So this is called training data and obviously more is better. So I therefore have n examples x near x1 up to xn and correspondingly y1 through yn. And then I can train. So my loss is going to be the sum for i going from 1 to n, sum over yi minus xi dot w plus b, that term squared, and the average of that. And my goal is to find parameters w and b such that that loss is minimized. So w star and b is star. And since this is a very simple linear least mean squares problem, I can actually find the weights and the bias nicely. And I'm just going to make my life a little bit easier. I'm going to turn the vectors x into the vectors x plus the constant term added separately. And I do the same thing for the weights. In this case, I can just treat all the weights plus the bias as one vector and ditto the new data x now takes care of the constant term. In this case, my linear model has to solve y minus x times w and I take the squared norm of that, so if I take the derivative of that, if you look at that, you just get a 2 over n times, and now I need to take the derivative of y minus x times w squared, so I get y minus x times w, times now dx dw, dx w dw, so that's just x. And since the problem is nice and convex, I can prove nice properties, and in particular I can find the optimal solution of that, simply by setting y minus xw transposed x equals zero and so if I do that I get basically that w star is x transposed x inverse times x times y. So this is very nice because now I can find the optimal solution and if I have a lot of data and a small number of parameters this is a terrific idea to use. As a matter of fact, linear models do that. 